between 12 and 3 in the afternoon and then um, 6 to 9 in the evening is when I usually try to do my course. Uh, um, I've been slacking on that a little lately, but, um, but those are the time frames that she kind of gave me. Because she told me, she said, the folks that she get in the morning aren't the ones that you're not going to reach in the afternoon. Those that you reach in the afternoon, you aren't going to necessarily meet, reach in the evening. So you get this, in the minute, it's almost like radio. When she did it, she, she, I talked to her, she <coughs> thinking about how radio does. Because they'll have a song. You know how you hear a song all day long? Well, they have it in rotation because the same people that may hear it in the morning don't necessarily hear it in the afternoon. Or the same people that hear it in the afternoon don't necessarily hear it in the evening. So that rotation sure. gives you exposure to different people. So same concept. With you know, with being able to use that technology and being able to use it like that, and, and people have people have loved the one that I do in the evening because I do what's called the evening conversation. Um, and what I do is I kind of just I just take um, different things. I'll take two movies and put them against each other. Um, I'll take two actors or two athletes and put them against each other and say, which one would you choose? And, and people actually have just really taken a liking to, oh, you can't do that. You can't put that person against this person. What you mean doing this, doing that? My God. But it's a really <coughs> just a fun way to get people engaged. And that was what her intent was when she had me to do it, was just to get people engaged with me. Because um, it's funny because even when I... Um, I'll go, uh, when I go to church sometimes, I'll see a couple of the, the um, people that, that kind of interact with me there. Be like, see, you weren't right for doing this. You weren't right for doing that. So it's really fun, something that I do that, that just kind of taking on its own little voice of its own and, and um, that I do that I enjoy now. And it is just, it really has increased my exposure um, and my brand because people have come to, come to see, you know, oh, wow, you, you do this or you, you did that. You know, I'm like, I'm like, wow. Okay, uh, and so I tell them, like, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, okay. <laughs> so um, that was one of the things that I did that, and, and the use of technology. But here are three questions, three quick questions for, for your technology. What 21st century techno technology innovation are you plugged into? That's the first question. What innovation are you plugged into? Whether it's social media, whether it's um, YouTube, do you have a, does your business have a YouTube channel? And are, are you using that? Um, and that's one of the things I know one of my strategies for this year was to increase my, um, my, increase my video content. Like when, he, when we were talking about the video, everything like that, we think that's going. <laughs> once, we, once, I, once I get that, that'll be right on there so that I'll be able to tell people, hey, you'll be able to check this out. And that even... That even assists me because I, I do speaking engagements up, uh, as well as other, other places. So they may ask, well, do you have any footage of you speaking to groups? So what am I going to do? Oh, here's the link that you can go to to be able to check out me speaking. And they can actually see what, what I do, how I do it, and how I interact with people. So using technology, I mean, is a great way to be able to expand your brand. So what, what are you plugged into? Yeah, and you should be plugged into some form of social media. It doesn't have to be all of them because there's a whole lot of them out there. But you should pick a good, you know, two to three of them. Because I know I use Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, YouTube. Some LinkedIn. And I actually had somebody that asked me, uh, I was having a conversation the other day, asked me if I used LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And I said I use it somewhat. I said because it is a, a good tool to be able to use and you, you don't have to do as much vetting on there because you know it's, a very, it's very professional and very strict in what they do. So um, LinkedIn is definitely one that you want to be tied in, uh, to connected to. So that's one. Um, but those, you should, you should be plugged into some 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 source of, of technology like that where you'll be able to kind of expand your, your brand because, I mean, the, 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 the web has leveled the playing field for small businesses. Like I mentioned to you before about we're touching people over in Africa. Could that have been possible 10 years ago? Probably not. Or maybe on a certain, <laughs> maybe on a certain level, but... Definitely, you know. So I mean, it, technology has has really given given us the opportunity to be able to touch people that we would not ordinarily even have thought about being able to touch. So that's that's an important piece with that. 
Um, the second thing is, um, is in the next 30 days, will, uh, how will you use technology to grow your brain? In the next 30 days. That means what, is, what content can you create using your social media platform, using your other technology that you may have to be able to grow <coughs> your brain? Mm -hmm. uh, is it, <clears throat> the, the point on um, YouTube especially, a lot of times we as business owners, we look at the platform for what its features are. Mm -hmm. But from a practical standpoint, YouTube is the second place that people go to look for information to make a decision. Wow. It's been a lot of, uh, recently, where let's say uh, a guy who was on the fence making a decision to work with me, comes back and says, or if I make a point in the, 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 the closing call, I may say something that resonated with it in his research, and say, oh, I'm going to go with you. So it's just, um, especially, let's say, the younger that um, your, your decision maker may be, let's say, anywhere from uh, 37 on down, that, that's where they're going. So mm -hmm. it, it's important to think about it from a, a practical standpoint. If someone's looking for me, I want them to find me and yep. make a decision based on that. Right, and, and you make it, by, like what you just said, but you make it easy for people to be able to find you when you use tools like that. Because like you said, YouTube is, I mean, and, and, and as, a, as an entrepreneur, even a, an aspiring entrepreneur, Please be cognizant of trends, and <clears throat> uh, not, and not as far as like trends to be trendy, but trends is where things are going to be five years from now, ten years from now. Um, because one of the things that that we were taught when I was in uh, college, that my um, that our dean, he, I mean, he, this was like it, most of us in our, I was a hotel restaurant management major, and one the thing that he told us that, that he's he was famous for was the bell curve. He started off us with, a, a, with this bell curve. And if you know the bell curve, he said there were some people that would be in the front of the bell curve, there'll be some that'll be on the top of the bell curve, and then there will be those that will be behind the bell curve. And his philosophy was you are to always be in the front of the bell curve. You should always be thinking five years forward, 10 years forward, where where your business is, where technology is, and keeping up with where things are going. Because if you keep up with where things are going, then you understand where your business, where you need to position your business, and how to position your business to be able to be there. Um, so it's very key. Like he just mentioned about YouTube, and, and a lot of folks don't necessarily know that and understand the the um, the, the significance of. It. And, and what it can do for you, you know. So I'm um, glad you glad you said that. Glad you glad you brought that up. That, that's really key. Um, and then the last one on the technology. Last question: Where do you see your brain in the next five years, ten years? Like I just mentioned. And these are things that you don't have to necessarily do right now. But when you get, you know, when you get home or you or when you're at your business, these are questions that you want to ask yourself, and you start to put together your plan of action. Because this will give you, um, this will give you the the um, those questions that you can use to be able to build um, the, your strategic plan on how you can go about growing your brain, being your brain. Um, my my thing this year is is I'm on a mission to make people better by the end of 2018 than they are at the beginning of 2018. And how do you do that? You do that by having, uh, giving them content, information, knowledge, and resources that they can <clears throat> use that they would not ordinarily have had they not had the encounter with me. So that's one of the things that, and, and doing things like this is part of that. Because I want you to be able to take those questions, put them together, and say, wow, I can now build my plan. My plan for, because we're almost six, six, six months in to 2018, right, already. Mm -hmm. And it's like the, the first two quarters are pretty much over for this year. So what are we doing, you know, um, what are we doing? Have we done the assessment of the first six months? So that moving forward in the next six months, what do we, where, where do I want to be by December? And being able to attack those, those parts of your business.
that you can use. Because, <clears throat> like I said, the partnerships that has to do with you know with gaining gaining uh, exposure to other uh, networks that you wouldn't ordinarily have. The technology, using technology to be able to um, to be able to show other you know to be able to gain the exposure um, kind of globally. I look at it globally because um, I don't think small. I think big. <laughs> so I, I'm always thinking, okay, now I'm, I'm not saying that's my ultimate where I want to be. That's not where I am now. But I know in order for me to get there, I have to have a plan to get there. There are steps to getting there. Mm -hmm. In order to be able, for me to be able to get to the <clears throat> ultimate place, I know, okay, I'm here. Now it's time for me to move here. How do I get from here to here to here to here, which will ultimately get me to where, you know, where, where I want to be on that, on that global stage. So strategy number three is exposure. What do you want to do on the exposure? How do you use exposure? What does exposure have to do? Um, what sources can you use to increase your visibility over the next six months? I'll say it again. What sources can you use to increase your visibility over the next six months? And you think about that. We talked about technology as one, of course. We talked about the partnerships. That's two. Right off the bat, those are two ways that you can actually use. And what that does, the, the exposure comes from, um, with the partnerships, like I mentioned, it puts you in a realm where people would not ordinarily have met you or known who you are just because of that connection that you have. I can't tell you how many people have, have told me, oh, wow, you, you know so-and-so. Why well, know so-and-so? Give you a funny thing. I, um, I went to a conference earlier this year, and we're going around, we're meeting and greeting, you know, people, different people. And one of the, um, one of the attendees, she comes up to me, and she says, oh, I know who you are. I said, oh, you do? She said, yeah. She said, you know what I see on Facebook all the time with all with the with the posting because what I'd done was I'd, I'd let people know about the event. I'd even done a small little, just like a little video promoting the event. Hey, this is what the event is. Y'all need to be there. You need to be in the room. This is what's going on. It's got to be. And I did that leading up to that particular event. So by the time I got there, this lady was like, oh, I've seen you. <laughs> And it, it, gave, it put me where somebody had already known me before I even walked in the room. So it's like, I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> so gaining the gaining exposure is something that we're certainly, uh, or using exposure, thinking about creative ways that you can use to be able to get exposure will definitely help you with, with the growing of your brand um, and expanding your brand. I should say that too. Not just growing it, but expanding it to, to um Places that you wouldn't ordinarily think that your brand should be, and you'd be surprised at 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 the, at the you know the partnerships that you can actually you know work with, um, where you might not think oh you know I do this particular business and this person may do that particular business, and um, and, and and not not necessarily work, but when you sit down and you do that assessment, you talk about where you do the vetting and you think about it, you say wow okay. Well, we might not, but I guarantee you that person may be connected to someone that can use your services, your product, your services as well. So it may not necessarily be that you two were, you know, were meant to do business together, but they may know someone else who needs your particular uh, product or services. So that's important that you, uh, you know, that you understand that and that you, uh, that you use that as, uh, as exposure. In the next 30 days, uh, what PR venues can you use to increase your brand awareness? That's going to events. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the next one. Um, but what, do you, you know, what, what uh, events are you going to um, that's going to give you some exposure? How, what networking events can you go to to be able to introduce yourself to other people that don't know you, have no idea what you do, but you're there, in the, and I call it my be in the room. People won't know you if you're not in the room. So you want to make sure that there are certain events that I tell my clients, there, whether it's a, a comp, a three, I usually tell them um, that there, I want you to have three major conferences that you go to a year. 
Now I'm talking, you might have to travel. <laughs> you might have to do, these are three <coughs> big ones where you know, okay, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be worth going to these events. Because it's gonna give you exposure to, um, to, to so many more people. Uh, and one of them that, that's coming up actually, um, is gonna be right down at the National Harbor, again, is the, um, the Power Networking Conference. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with that, by Dr. George Frazier. Um, but it's one of the largest networking events um, uh, of the, of the uh, just all around through, throughout the um, throughout the calendar year, uh, and it's in July. It's, it comes up in July, but um, but I, I usually tell them to pick three big events, and then of course you'll have um, the the kind of local events that you go to. But there should be. Uh, three major events that you go to that you know that you're going to be a part of for your business to be able to grow it on a, on a larger scale. So what are you going to do in the next 30 days? Um, how many of your clients can get you to give you a referral or testimony? Testimony. I can't tell you how important it is um, for, for how in, in testimonials go when it comes to other people um, doing business with you. Uh, the testimonials they, they go so far because a lot of people want to know, okay, well, who have you done business for? And what have they said about you? <laughs> you know, because people, people who, uh, who do business and, and do it well, you want to make sure that people know. If you have a record. And, and it's no harm in asking your, you know, your clients, um, would, do you mind doing a, you know, doing a testimonial for me? Whether it's through video or whether it's through um, just a, a written test, a testimonial. Um, it can be either way. I found act, actually I've asked a couple of um, my clients to do video testimonial because video testimonials kind of have really, they because people get to see them more so than uh, when they're written and everything like that. But I found that using the video testimonials is really, really, um, really well. And then that becomes part of my uh, video content that I can post on my, on my YouTube channel that people can actually see, wow, this is somebody who's actually worked with them. Um, and um, they meant, we mentioned LinkedIn as well. That can be part of what you put on LinkedIn because LinkedIn has the recommendations and referrals too um, that you can actually put on there uh, as well so that people know what kind of work that you do. You know, are, they, are you worth doing business with? So those are just a couple of things that you can do to gain um, the exposure, that part of gaining the exposure uh, that you want to be able to get. The next thing is the, uh, the events. And, and I put this, there should be events and then there's a, ca there's a calendar or calendar and events. You should have a personal calendar of things that you do or that you're doing. And then you should have an events calendar, which is there are certain events that, we, that I mentioned before that you should be in the room at. And I usually, I, I usually start off with a 30-day, you know, because um, that's easy because that's you do it by the calendar. And you take a look at and right where, where we are, Baltimore has a lot of things going on. The weather's starting to change now, so you have a lot of, you know, a lot of events going on during the, you know, during the spring and summertime that you can have, you go to networking events. And especially in the, the business community, it's, I mean, it is really... When, you, when you're connected into it, you're plugged into it, you can really find and hone in on some great events that are going on around here in Baltimore City. Because I know um, the, 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 um, the network, uh, I think, that, that you all have. I mean, y'all are you all starting up with, with yours again? Or? Yeah, we got our brunch and some other stuff coming Yeah. Out. So, I mean, it's, it's some really great things that are going on here in the city business-wise. Um, that you can get connected to. It's your event that brought me here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember it from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so, good, good networking event. Right. Thank you. Okay. I mean, and it's, it's great. Um, the, the events, you want to make sure that, that you look at your 30 day calendar. You say, okay, what's going on in the next 30 days? And even if you go onto the internet, you can, um, the, there are meetup groups that you can be a part of that have events that are going on, um, and there are other organizations that, um, that you may or may not be a part of. BPM has great things that are going on, like this tonight, and, and other, um, the, the, um, the, 
Greater Baltimore Black Chamber. They have events that they put on with Kendrick and them. It's just a lot of things that you can get plugged into that you can do networking with um, to be able to put on your calendar. And, and each week you can say, okay, well, I know I could do this, this, and this, or this, this one this week. I can do, you know, you should be doing a, at least a couple of months. A couple of months. Because, I mean, we all have our, you know, our personal lives, too, so you want to make sure you have that. But you should also make sure that you have your, your business calendar for the things that you want to actually strategically be in. Oh, I need to be in the room for that event. That looks like a place that I need to be. Do you have any tips for business owners who are a little bit nervous about networking, you know, going to a you know, networking event, they don't know anybody? Any icebreaker tips or anything that... Well, here's the, here's the thing about um, going to events, and and people may they they may they may think it, but I'm actually really quiet. I'm one of those ones that be like, go to an event. I'm quiet. I'm I'm, I'm going to sit back. I'm not going to say much, and I'll introduce myself, you know, to to some people and stuff like that. But I'm not that. Oh, you know, right in front of somebody, and I'm not that kind of in your face type, you know, type person. I'm just that, okay, you know, I kind of talk to people. Um, but here's, here's a tip that I learned from a business associate of mine. She, she, she talked about this. She said, before you go to, go to an event, you kind of do your little bit of research and you kind of find out who you think might be in the room, those folks that might be in the room. And she said, first you want to kind of just be observant. And what you want to do is you want to be strategic about the people that you introduce yourself to. Who is it in the room that I need to introduce myself to? Mm -hmm. And you have a 30, sec 30 second pitch, 30 to 60 second pitch, which is you just know who you are, what you do, and how you do it that quick. You should be able to do that in 30 seconds. Who you are, what you do, and how you do it. Hi, my name is Leroy McKenzie. I assist, I, I assist entrepreneurs in bringing the visions to reality. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Well, my name is Leroy McKenzie. I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, what's an entrepreneur? It's an individual that um, that you know that writes books, but also takes on the whole concept of of um, of publishing their own books. But you do something asking. It's not really talking about yourself, but it's letting people know, you know, about about you. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to just kind of barge in the, you know, because the traditional thing is just telling people, oh, my name is so and so. I do this. Oh, well, what do you do? But it's, it's giving them something that will engage them to want to wanna know more about you. And, and you use that in your 30-second pitch of who you are, what you do, and how you do it. You want to come up with something creative. Like I said, bringing visions to reality. Oh, well, how do you do that? Well, I do that through my book publishing services, and I do it through my business consulting that I do. Introduce myself that way. That's something that's... It, 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 it's not... Too much, but it also I think gets them engaged with you, where they'll you know they they be prompted to ask more questions, and you can ask them too. Or how do you serve? You know how do you serve? How do you serve someone? You know what is it that you that you do? What service is it that you provide for someone? And I always liken it like this, or I say this is I am the answer to someone's problem. And the question is, is whose answer am I? It could be any. It could be anyone. Mm -hmm. Something I found um, very helpful in networking is that we're all there to meet someone, right? So um, I usually ask someone, you know, if you can't think of anything, hi, I'm Michelle. Who are you here to meet after you've given your spiel? I'm from, uh, and who are you here to? Tell me about yourself and who are you here to meet? Mm. So that gives me an idea to not just talk about myself. Now mm. I get to engage you. And interesting enough, I found that, you know, sometimes you may know someone in the room where you can go, hey, I know someone. I know someone who does book publishing. Uh, why don't I introduce you? Or they may say, well, hey, I know someone that's, you know, and now you've engaged. That's, well, that's always been a very helpful question, especially if, Extensively, if you're the nervous type, you don't know how to start a conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. With my super simple. Uh, this is whether you're tongue tied, anxiety, <laughs> all these things. Simply position yourself next to the coffee 
or the food, and mm. you will have more conversation. <laughs> <laughs> After listening, and because when people, let's say, are hungry, and you're Look running into the food, they're going to associate you with it. And that's still, even from the very beginning to this day, I'm sitting right next to the right. And that's a strategy, though, too. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's things like that. Not oh, that's really. a nugget. I got two nuggets. <laughs> two nuggets. That, that's awesome. That's good. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. I'm Olivia Fields, and I'm the best manicurist you'll ever find in this area. No, no that's right. Um, and I believe that, and I, I'm aiming to make you believe it as well. The number one manicurist. That's right. And I'll tell you why I said that in a second. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I wanted to say that because um, I didn't want to leave a bad first impression, because some of you I've never met. And, um, and I'm running, because I'm literally um, working... I had to pick up my kids from school, and I said, i got to get past there and at least get a business card or something. Um, I think I'll be more prepared to sit through the whole session the next the next series that I um, attend. But um, I didn't want to just walk out, to, like come in here late and rush back out the door. Y'all be like, God, it's holy shit. <laughs> um, and leave that impression on you. Um, I'm going to leave a couple of cards. I don't want to interrupt go. anybody, but if anybody would like to have my cards, I'm going to leave a couple of cards. And... Um, and I want to say thank you, Anthony, to you because um, your network group has led me to a lot of good stuff. Mm -hmm. This being one of them. It's a little and brother I'm right that's how I got linked into yeah. um, the internet that connection guy. to to um, to call and you know ask questions about this event. So I'm excited uh, about the whole thing because I'm already on a. A mission for minding my own business. Mm -hmm. So the fact that that was the title was all I needed to hear. Um, uh, oh, thank you, thank you very much. So um, I'm look, I'm gonna look forward to meeting all of you again, hopefully Absolutely. another day, and learn more about what you guys. I, I would like to put I'm something on your to calendar. Be in the room, as you said, be in some of these rooms. I got a room for you to be in on first. Wednesday, it's June the 6th. I'm the president of the Greater Baltimore Black Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Absolutely. We don't have nobody doing what you're doing. So you How about every call that won't. I have, I'm going to reach out to you personally. Okay. And then just reintroduce myself and at least try to get to know who you are. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Mental notes next week, too. Okay. Okay. Mental, okay. Yeah, I did mental see that. Mental notes. I, I support all of them. Absolutely. But, um, just to touch on one of the things that, that I mentioned to her about saying the number one. She said she's the best, but the number one. I'll tell you where I learned this from. Um, one, of my, one of my assignments this year was to introduce myself to a millionaire. Right? <laughs> so, um, my, uh, was to introduce myself through a couple different ways. One, every book that I'm reading this year has, is written by a millionaire. Every book that I'm reading this year is written by a millionaire. Because if I'm going to be one, I've got to see how they think mm -hmm. and the things that they do. So that was one of my things in, in being able to do that. But two, um, to actually physically introduce myself to a millionaire, I actually um, joined a group by a gentleman. Uh, his, his name is Dr. Will, Dr. Will Moreland on Facebook. I mean... This, this brother is, I mean, on it, and he gives you so many tips on um, being, being, a, being successful in business. But here's one of the things that he learned, that he uh, taught us one time that I, that I learned from him, and I, and I got to wind up. So I'm going to give you all this. But he talked about the category of one. And if you notice, and I'm telling you, after y'all hear me, when y'all go to a store anywhere, y'all going to start to see this. Because I did when he started telling us about it. I was like, oh, this is crazy. So the category of one, you ever seen a product that has the, it has the, it'll say the number one brand for this, the number one brand for that? That's the category of one. Where they have themselves, they branded themselves as being the best or the number one in that particular industry. No lie. I'm, I'm going to the, um, I had to go to Advanced Auto Parts, buy some antifreeze, right? For my car. They didn't have the antifreeze that I usually use because I, I had to use a specific kind of antifreeze, right? So I was like, okay. Um, I said, well, what else? He said, and the, the guy, he brings out, the, he said, we don't have you know, the, the brand that you're looking for, he said, but we do have Presto. And I and I wish I had my um wish I had the thing with me. But 
you know, Presto is the big yellow, you know, the big yellow gallon. Mm -hmm. On that thing, it says the number one brand for, I think, cooling or something like that or whatever. And I'm looking at it, and all I could do was laugh. And I was like, oh, I guess I got to buy it now. I said, because it's the, it's, it's the category of one. And I took a picture of it, and, and I, sent it to, um, I sent it to Dr. Will. We call him Dr. Will. I said, Dr. Will, I said, look what I found. <laughs> and he said, that's it. He said, because when we, we, we have this mindset that when we, when we think about things, we, wanna, uh, we want people to associate us with being the best or being the top of what it is that we do. And if you notice, that's what, um, that's what companies do when they want you to understand, when they want you to think of them being the best in that particular industry. Whether it's, you know, whether it's cars, whether it's, like I said, coolant, any of those things. They'll brand, they put, brand themselves specifically, the number one brand for this, the number one brand for that. And it works. I was just like, wow. I said, man. I said, I've got, and I've really gotten into that, where you start to think of yourself, when she said, the number one, um, what'd she say? She, she said the best. It, the, man, the best manicures. Yeah, manicures in Baltimore. So who, you, if, she's, if she brands herself the number one manicures in Baltimore, who you think people are going to be calling? Her. Oh, I got to find out if she say who she is. <laughs> And especially if she has people that are, oh, you gotta go see her. Like, oh yeah, I, I I gotta go get my you know get my nails manicured by her, cause I know she's gonna do she's gonna do the job. She's gonna follow through in who she says that she is. And you gotta make sure if you're gonna brand yourself that that you that, you know that you are that, and that you you know that you that you make sure that you're best at you you want to best at that. So. That's part of, you know, what I was saying about, you know, being able to brand yourself and everything like that. Um, but I don't want to go over my time. Um, but, and we're only on number five. So let me give you these questions real quick. Um, and number five is increase your product, when to increase your products and services. When do you do that? How do you know when to increase what your products and services are? Good question. <clears throat> and here's the first one. What products or services can you add to your brand? And I'm going to give you three different ways to be able to do this. What products and services can you add to your brand? That means you have an additional product or service that you want to that you want to um, add. Now, if you notice, um, let's take a look at, at uh, uh, um, I use Domino's. Domino's, for years, was just known for pizza, right? I don't take care for them anymore, but, um, but Domino's has now gone from Having pizza, just pizza, to what? You can get wings, you can get um, the, um, I think, little cheese, little, um, I think, is it cheese balls or something like that that they have? Mm -hmm. uh, mozzarella sticks. They have a, a, a number of things now that they've added to their particular menu. It's a new product that they offer. So how do you know when to be able to do that? You know, when, you, you have to understand when to do it, When's a good time to do it, um, and and how to do it too, because you don't want to add something that really isn't going to be, you know, kind of takes away from, you know, from who you are. And, and another example <laughs> that I use real quick um, is is Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey went from being a comedian to being a uh, radio, you know, radio host to now being a television host. He's added to what he originally was, what he you know went to I guess went to Hollywood for. He's added that particular you know that particular um, product or service set, if you will, to who he is as a brand. And in each time, it's taken him to a, you know kind of to a, to a different level, to another level with what he wants to do. You know, I don't, I don't think he does the comedy too much anymore, but especially with the with the radio. And the TV, and he's even added, if you want to add to that, where he, you know, he's written a couple of books, too. So knowing when to be able to do those things, strategically doing it, and understanding the benefit behind it adds to who you are. And you always want to make sure that, that it's adding to who you are and that you aren't taking on too much uh, at one time. So if you want to do that, um, what can you expand um, or, yeah, what way can you expand the products or services that you already offer? Who do you have that you can kind of add on to? 
And then the third thing is when was the last time you got feedback from your clients? Client tells you that you, you know, oh, you don't have uh, this, you know, this particular thing. And, and what you'll find is getting the feedback will let you know the needs of your particular clients. And if there's a particular need that they have, and you can actually, that's something that you can begin to offer to them, that's going to increase your bottom line. And they'll start to see and say, wow, okay. It, because a lot of people, well, one thing that I've learned is, is with, with customers is they like convenience. People like convenience. That's one of the reasons why Amazon has blown up mm -hmm. and is as big as it is because they recognize convenience for people. I had um, one of one of one of our, um, friends of mine. He said him and his wife do their grocery shopping through Amazon. <laughs> through Amazon. Wow. <laughs> they don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> And that's what I told him. I said, well, y'all ain't got to go nowhere for nothing. And, and, and then he started to talk to me about, well, here's how it benefits. He said, it saves us on gas. He said, we don't, it doesn't put wear and tear on the car. And we don't have to worry about being in an accident. I said, okay. I said, that's a great way of looking at it. I said, the convenience of it. The convenience of, you know, not having to go, you know, having to go out to buy your groceries where it can be delivered right to your door. I was like, wow. But that's part of understanding how to be able to add to it. And, and um, uh, Mr. Bezos has been a genius at that. They, they, brought, they bought over Whole Foods. There's a reason why they bought over Whole Foods. They saw that that was a market that, that there was a, a, a need in and that they could fill that particular need. So what do they do? They say, hey, we'll, we'll buy it, and that'll expand who we are and, and part of the products and services that we offer to people. Amazon Prime, that's a part of their service that they offer to, to individuals that want it. You get your, whatever you order, you can get it within a day or two if you're part of Amazon Prime. That's their promise to you. That's adding on to the products and services that they already have. And that's how Amazon has gone from here, you know, where they were already, you know, to actually here and made Mr. Bezos. I don't know if y'all know, but he's the richest man in the world. 112 billion is his net, is his work. Yeah, that's what it be. <laughs> he's worth 112 billion dollars, but he also owns other other um, companies. companies too, because he owns. Um, the Washington Post, I believe it is, and a couple other companies, of course. But Amazon, it has, I mean, it grew, I think, I think it's by like, I think last year, 2017, it was like 20, it was either 20 something or 30 something percent growth. It was just, when I read the number, I was like, wow. But he did that by saying, okay, expanding the products and the services that he, that the company offered. Well, Amazon started out just getting out of like, College school books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's probably right, <laughs> school books. So, so I'm just, I mean, but those are things that you, when you're thinking about your business, thinking about your brand, that you, you know, that you want to incorporate and start to think about. Because I guarantee you, those who are successful and who are truly successful at it, that's how they strategically think about it. What can I do to be able to do that? So my personal experience, I um, started it out when I moved back here doing bankruptcy prep. So I prepare bankruptcies for people. My clients came to me telling me that they wanted to buy homes. I had my license in an active status. So I then started um, teaching them how to rebuild their credit. Then it turned into them buying houses. So now I'm working on a project to do rent to own because they have to wait two years before they can buy a house if they're a first time home buyer. Excellent to get the grant programs. Mm -hmm. So that's why I came here today. I was like, oh, this looks like this will be really helpful. So thank you all. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great way because, uh, like you just said, a lot of folks with trying to get their credit straight, that, that rent to own two years gives allows them the time to be able to do that, but still at the same time to be able to be in a, be in a property and, and actually put money towards, towards the, mm -hmm. that property. So, yeah, absolutely. So um, I know I got two more, but I'm not going to get to <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, so, 
that's that's the part of being able to increase your your products and, and services and understanding when to do it, uh, how to do it. And there, like I just mentioned, there are a couple of different ways that you can actually that you want to think about doing it. And that's um, what you can add, how you can expand on what you already have, and then um, when was the last time you had feedback from your clients? Your clients can give you um, what they might you know what their needs are, you know what they might need more of. And you can see, if, like she just talked about, there's a way that you can incorporate what they need. Oh wow, this is something that I can that I can actually offer them now that will you know that will actually uh, benefit benefit them, and it actually benefits me with with the bottom line that we have. So um, so that's awesome. Now that's a great great example too. Um, number six, promotions. What item is your get their attention item? Think about that. What's your get their attention item? You ever gone to a bookstore, you've gone somewhere, and something just absolutely stands out? Or whether it's a commercial. Long time ago, I'll tell you, um, watching TV, <laughs> and it's a commercial. I forgot, I think it was Crest. It was a two-faced commercial. Something really simple. But the commercial was so... Just it just kind of stuck out to me because honestly it was like just this guy he um, he was using the toothpaste and he got the attention of some girl because of his smile or whatever because he used this toothpaste. So what y'all think I went out and bought? Well, I was like, oh, I gotta buy that toothpaste because it's gonna do this and, and that it's gonna give me the pretty smile and all this that, and the other. But that's what you know. What's that get your attention item that you can have? Or even if you want, if there's something that you can offer to get someone's attention, you know, like with yours, with that that rent to own, someone may be looking. Oh, I really want a house. I really need. I really, you know, want to be able to do that. But I'm not in a position to be able to do that right now. Well, I have this special going on right now that I'm able to offer to someone. You know, to for those, I have this particular package. It's the rent our rent to own package that we can offer you. Where it gives those who aren't necessarily credit ready, but we get you ready to be able to move into your. We get you to that to to the point where we can actually have your home, where you can have a home in three to five years, mm -hmm. so to speak. Boom, that get their attention item or package that you know that that will draw people in. Um, I mean. There are there are a number of, of my business uh, you know business associates that use you know just use all kinds of to get their attention. I'm, I'm watching um, one of my um, one of my friends who, who does a Facebook Live the other day, and she does she does the video, and she just she's one of those energetic people. And I've been to um, I've been to one of her events before. It's just phenomenal of how she puts it on. But when she does the Facebook Live, she's that way as well. She's energetic, she's all that. Um, but she does this cute thing, and I told her the other day, I'm like, you're killing me with that. But when she's doing the video, she'll turn around. Nobody's around with her, but she'll say, quiet on the set, quiet on the set. Just kind of like she's in an actual, you know, like on a movie or something like that. Just something that just gets your attention, and she's a, um, she's a, she's a life coach. Um, but, and, and everything that she does, get coached up. She's like, you can, you know, everything that she does is, is done with energy, but it's done with, I can do this for you. You know, she, I, and I can't remember the saying that she does. She says, something if you're not ashamed, ta it says, share if you're not ashamed, and some other stuff when she's doing it. But she does a lot of things that captures you when you're watching her Facebook lives. To be able to get people engaged in what she does. And that's part of, to me, that's part of her that get your attention item. Mm -hmm. Hers is doing that. And she, I think she does it daily. She either does it daily or weekly. Um, 12 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Um, and she gives tips, nuggets, and all those other great things that, that captures people. Um, and, and she uses that to get people in. And so you want to think about what is it that you can use that's going to bring people in, even when you're in a room. What's that thing that's going to make people remember you from everybody else? And one of the things that I tell my authors, too, when it comes to their book covers, I said, what's going to make your book 
different, your book different from everybody else's? What's going to make that person want to pick your book up versus somebody else's? Because if you're in a bookstore, you're not competing. You're, compete, you're, you're competing against thousands of books. I mean, that's just the, 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 the big scheme of things. When somebody comes into a, a bookstore, they're coming to look for a particular type of book. So once they narrow it down to, I want, I'm looking for this particular kind of book, and they get into that genre, what's going to make me pick up your book versus somebody else's? What is it that's going to stand out right there, whether it's the, the front cover, what do you have on that cover, what do you have on the back that's going to say, wow, I need to buy this? So you want to make sure that you have that. Um, what's your 30-second pitch? And we, talk a little, we talked a little bit about that. Who you are, what you do, how you do it. You, that should be just automatic with you. It should be like if somebody goes to a Google search, and they put, and, and I do this specifically, there are keywords that I listen for when I'm talking with someone. And if they say a keyword, I'm on it. Boom. I can, you know, I have the answer to your problem. Because that's all business is, is being somebody's answer. Is being somebody's answer. And when you come from that perspective of being somebody's answer and solving someone's problem, trust me, you, you, you can sift out a whole lot of other stuff. Because if you're not somebody's answer, then, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you have a nice conversation, but you know that's not who I need to be talking to. I need to talk with I need to be talking with people that have my particular that have a problem the problem that I have the answer to so that I can be their answer. Like the young lady said here, she's dealing with with real estate of course, but part of her answer is being her being the answer for someone who can't necessarily get into a house right now. She's an answer for that person right now. So that's one of the one of the people that she knows she's the answer for. So when she deals with individuals, that's that's definitely one of the key things that she's listening for. Is this person somebody who needs that particular package? So I can be their answer. Um, the last one, what problem do you solve? We just talked about that. What problem do you solve? And if you and every person in business should be able to answer that answer that question. What problem do you solve? Because that's all that's all business is. And doing my one of the books that I've written, um, doing the research for it because I, I was talking with uh, entrepreneurs, uh, interviewing entrepreneurs who were under the age of forty. But one of the things that I found out in my research was about a lot about entrepreneurs. And the gentleman that started Holiday Inn, um, the hotel chain, the reason he started the Holiday Inn chain was because when him and his family went on vacation, there were no hotels that accepted pets. So whenever you go to a Holiday Inn, you can, since day one, they accept pets. I don't know how many other hotels do that. But that specific hotel was specifically designed for people who wanted to take their pets on vacation with them. He was their answer because he needed somebody who had that answer and they didn't. So he created it. Same thing with, um, and, and I use Steve, uh, Steve Jobs, but he's the only one, and y'all might be able to help me with this. He, that, that's the only, he's the only person that I can think of that created an answer where there was no problem. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Because we just use the telephone. <laughs> right. We use the telephone. We used our computers. We listened to music. Mm -hmm. But he, he found a way to say, you know what? You have this problem of being able to uh, compact everything into one particular device. And I'm the person that can do it. And now we all do it. And it blew my mind when I started thinking about it. I was just like, now that, you want to talk about that's genius. Creating an answer to a problem that already that isn't that doesn't exist. I was like, wow. 
But when you when you when you come from that perspective of being someone's answer, you will always find yourself trying to continuously find out ways to be able to improve what you do and 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 also to be able to improve what you do, but also expand on what you do. Because like I said, technology is always is always uh, always moving forward. So we ha we use those those devices, those things that that come along that be able to assist us to be able to do what we do and provide more answers for what people you know need to do, want to do with us. Because the the more answers you provide, the more business people want to do with it. That's just the bottom line. I, I honestly believe that. Well, most entrepreneurs started out with solving their own problems. Exactly. Yep. I would mm -hmm. say, right, really. Especially right. my wife. Mm -hmm. She wants to create a business for every issue. Not <laughs> issue everything that makes her life easier. But, I mean, most 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 entrepreneurs start out with the problem they've had. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I'll start with you guys in your backyard. I don't remember. Anyone know the story? How yeah. it started up? Like, that's what I, I, was, I was thinking mm -hmm. about. You know, something. University of Maryland, riding his bike around, exactly. sweat a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Sweat too much. Yeah. And, and then right. he created shirts that, you know, this is that. So it's, it could be most the simplest idea, um, but it could be into it. Because most people have the same problem or similar problem. Right. So that's how it all correlates. Absolutely. The, the, um, the gentleman that started Subway, he was doing it just to kind of make money to go to college. He was trying to find a way to build it. And, and one of his... Um, one of his parents' friends, they were, I think, at a barbecue or, you know, at an event at their house or something like that he was having. And the guy asked him, you know, what was he going to be doing, you know, going into, the, you know, going to school and stuff like that. And he told him, you know, what he wanted to do. And, he, and the guy put in his head, well, did you think about doing sandwiches, I think he said, you know, something like that. But it was something to the effect of doing some kind of sandwiches and stuff like that. Um, and and that, that idea for Subway came from that. Um, I don't know if you all have, have know the story of McDonald's. Have any of you seen the um, what's the name of that movie? Um, Founder. Founder. Found right. If you all haven't watched the movie the Founder, trailer. yeah, you'll just it, it, it is it is one of the it's best. A, it's, a, it's an eye opener. Okay. It, may, it makes you like you gotta. It ties in emotion, but also touches upon the business aspect mm -hmm. of doing business with people. It's Absolutely. A really good movie. Because it's the story of how McDonald's got started. And I'm thinking, I was just like, okay, I did not realize that the name McDonald's, that, were the two, that was the two brothers that started the company. That was their name. But the guy who people I think are most known or is known for McDonald's is the gentleman that, I say, stole it from them. He stole it and he did it in an underhanded way. But at the same time, the brothers didn't expand on what they were doing. And part of it was because they were afraid. And I understand because they had they'd gone through some negative uh, uh, partnerships before. So they were having it and doing it. But he was so gung-ho about taking their concept. You know, the fast food concept comes from when you watch the movie. You get a chance to watch the movie. It comes right. They created it. The brothers that, that built McDonald's, that's the fast food concept. That every other franchise does. It came from them developing that formula, getting you your food within. A, I think that when they first started was it was under. I think it was thirty. Not thirty. Was it thirty seconds or something like that? It's I know so, it was under. It's their, but their whole business model is built off of efficiency. Yeah. Everything is like calculated to the size of right. their rooms, to the movement, to the amount of ketchup they put. On a three pickles, it's it's like three pickles. Like wow. The whole that whole concept. That's why they were better because they had a system as yep. opposed to people waiting for. But you gotta check if you get a chance. Check out that movie. It's called Founder. Michael um, Michael uh, Keaton mm -hmm. plays. Um, and I forgot the guy's name. The guy from Beetlejuice. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but if you if you pull up, I think even if you pull up Wikipedia, or whatever, it'll give you the guy's name mm -hmm. of of who who the, it's known for. Um, McDonald's is known for, and this is how underhanded he was. He actually, and I don't tell you whole movie, but he he took. They couldn't even keep the name on the original McDonald's that they had. You, you, yeah. I don't <laughs> want to tell you. You guys gotta watch. Crazy. It. It's crazy. You gotta he watch. Was a shock. I mean, yeah. That's what it boils down to. Right. It, it just it, it shows you, like Anthony was just saying, it shows you about the aspect of business that you gotta be careful. 
And you have to be careful and protect yourself too, but also not being uh, afraid to put your, you know, to, to, to be able to expand your brand, to be able to put it out there because before they were comfortable. They were good with their little, you know, their little area that they were doing it well known and everything like that. But he had a bigger idea for it. And when they didn't want to do it, he found out a way to, to be able to do it without them. But if you get a chance, check out that movie. It is it is well worth watching. It's a great business movie but, um, for those that are in business um, or even aspiring entrepreneurs to be able to watch, to understand about business and branding. You know, marketing and branding because he takes that concept and he, I mean, he runs with it. Runs, definitely runs with it. You would like it too. I just looked it up. I just looked it up so I can download it. That's the whole. The whole that's the way the model is really real estate. More than anything. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is great. It is great. It is great. Um, and the number seven is brand new, and and this is my just just my my everything, and it's about it's a mindset, and it's a it's a mindset that takes you into understanding who you are because your brand is more than just your business. You have to understand that you are your brand. And things that I say, you, your, you, your business, and your organization, you are the brand. And mo most people, when they think about their brand, they only think about their business. But when you think about Brandy, you also have to think about you as the brand. Because when people see you, they see your brand. When people do business, they do business with you, not your business. That's the concept. Because most people, when they do business, they do business with people that they feel comfortable with and that they know. And so you have to understand that they 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 feel when they feel comfortable with you, they'll feel comfortable with your business. So what's your next step? Setting your foundation. How do you set your, your branding foundation? And that's by instilling in, in yourself and sitting down and, and writing the writing down your seven strategies, the partnerships, the technology, the exposure, the promotions, the um, increasing your, your products and services, and um, and then also your well your promotions. Putting those, setting that foundation for, for those. Doing your routine. Um, one of the things that, that I, I tell my clients to do is, in, in this year, and I'm going to hand this out to you all too, and it's something that I came up with this year. Oh, actually, you know what, I'm going to give you all those details. Um, this is what I, I came up with at the end of the year, and I actually did this myself too. And, and I did it first before I gave it to anybody else. But it's, what does your 2018 business look like? And this is the concept of it. Um, part one is, what does your business look like in 2018? And that's from a vision perspective, a, a purpose perspective, and a branding perspective. What's your vision for this year? What's your purpose for this year? And what does your brand look like this year? You want to make sure that you start with those concepts and those, those ideals right there. Because that'll, that'll give you the foundation of, of where you're trying to go and what you're trying to accomplish.